Okay guys, so I've been wanting to put this video together for a while and I'm just about to hit 5,000 miles with the Scrambler so I've had it close to a year already I've done everywhere from you know city ripping, uh, highway miles, a lot of highway miles, some dirt roads, uh, some hardcore off-roading as you will see later on on the tank uh, so yeah I wanted to basically do a top five things that I like about the Scrambler and top five things that I'm not too much of a fan of or basically the top five uh, deficiencies on the bike so number one on the top five things I do like about the Scrambler is going to be the overall components on the bike I'm referring to the suspension brakes uh, the TFT display so let's dive into it so starting with the suspension I think Triumph did a really good job with the components that they chose for this bike and mind you this isn't even you know the hardcore off-road version the XE this is the XC or the base level uh, of the two the more street oriented one so they went with 45 millimeter in diameter show us on the front for the forks they have 200 millimeters of travel which equates to about 7.1 inches and I've done relatively nasty off-road trails, hit some pretty big potholes and I've never bottomed the suspension out. I, I'm 6'2", I weigh about 210 pounds and the most that the suspension has compressed is up to this point. So right around like the two thirds of the overall travel, which I think is pretty good for this suspension. Now the forks are adjustable in rebound and compression, but not in preload. Now moving to the rear, uh, they did the twin Olin's setup, so with a remote reservoir. Again, 200 millimeters of travel. This one is fully adjustable, so both uh, rebound, compression, and preload. Uh, with this clickers over here and on the top of the reservoir uh, canister and uh i think they this suspension has worked pretty well for me like i said i'm consider myself a heavy guy uh for this type of bike and i haven't experienced any you know discomfort or or any issues uh be it riding on the highway or riding off-road uh i dial in the suspension when i ride with my girlfriend as a passenger and we hit like you know the streets here in miami are pretty in pretty bad condition and the thing just floats over everything so i could only imagine how much better the x east suspension is with all the additional travel and the uh, beefier front forks which are 47 millimeters on the xe so yeah i think they did a really good job uh i know uh steve camrad did some tuning to his rear shocks i don't know if to his forks probably uh so you know these are fully rebuildable adjustable like any other suspension and you can basically custom tune it to your proportions so moving on to the brakes so these are 320 millimeter brembo m50s this is the type of thing that you find on the triumph street triple the thruxton rs uh they are four piston monoblock brakes uh this thing stops really, really well. It's got, it saved my ass in a once or twice, maybe 10 times. Yeah, definitely a solid setup here. Single Brembo disc on the back, but again, most of the braking that you're gonna do on a bike, you do it with your front uh, wheel. So super solid performance. Again, going back to the components, uh, which is number one on this list. I think they, they've done pretty well on the brakes department. The TFT display, I think it's an absolute solid piece of equipment. Uh, super clear display, uh, really easy to read, really easy to work with. The joystick is a little finicky. If you see here, it has that much wiggle or that much play before you actually start moving things around. Uh, but overall, this thing is pretty solid. I mean, we're it's 2 p.m. here, the sun is hitting it straight on and you can clearly see everything i have it on the day mode and then you can put it on the night mode which turns everything to black but again i leave it on auto and then as the sensor on the headlight detects that it's nighttime it automatically moves it into black uh yeah tft display great job triumph so the other aspect that they think they did really well is with the rims that come on the bike so as you know it's 21 inch uh front 17 inch rear 
pretty solid rims from our front. Uh, outside spoke, so they allow you to run tubeless knobbies like I'm doing right now. Uh, which, by the way, these tires are great, but I'll leave that for another video. Uh, yeah, I think the rims are a proper off-road setup. Not all bikes that you get in the Scrambler or off-road lineups throughout the manufacturers come with spoke rims. Some of them come with cast iron rims, which are a lot more prone to bending and, and braking when you take them off-road. Next on the list of components or things that I do like about this bike is the fact that it's fully LED uh, front to back. So from factory, you know, it's not typical. The manufacturers will give you full LED headlight, full LED turn signals, uh, full LED brake light, as well as rear signals. I think they did a really good job with that. Uh, some people are not a fan of the OEM tail light. I, for one, I'm a fan of it. I, I think it looks pretty nice. I wouldn't change it. I'm definitely doing the tail tidy soon, probably in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, but I'm not getting rid of the tail light. I, I'm honestly a fan of the look of it. But yeah, I mean, you're getting full LED on a standard bike. I think that's a pretty sweet deal. Uh, I think all manufacturers should do that as standard uh, in 2021. So moving on to number two on the top five list of things that I like about the Scrambler is going to be that thing, the 1200 Bonneville high power parallel twin engine. Uh, it's an amazing engine, man. What can I say? This thing just has torque for days. It has a proper amount of uh, horsepower as well. Uh, the factory figures are around 89 horsepower to the crank and 81.1 pound-feet of torque, uh, which become available at 4,500 RPM. Now, the curious thing about this engine is that out of the torque available on it, 80% of that torque is gonna be available anywhere on the RPM range. So it doesn't matter if you're doing 2,500 RPM or you're doing 7,000 RPM, 80% of those 81.1 pound-feet of torque are always gonna be on tap. So it definitely makes for a really fun riding experience. You will never feel like you need to shift down because you're losing torque or you're losing power and you need to rev it up. Basically, I've been in third, fourth, fifth gear and you just open the throttle and the thing will just go. So key note there, uh, a lot of people think it's all about the horsepower, but this isn't a super high output horsepower bike by no, by no means. It's 89 horsepower to the crank. I think it's putting out from what I've read about 72 horsepower to the rear wheel but it's the torque. The torque is what really makes this engine stand out and, uh, and be as good as it is. Uh, the sound of it, because it's a 270 degree crank, resembles more that one of a V-twin engine than a parallel twin, uh, such as that you have on a Yamaha Tenere uh, 700 or a Honda Africa twin. Uh, it does sound more like your traditional V-twin, which I love, so let me go ahead and give it a rev so you guys can listen to it. Now this one doesn't have uh, the stock exhaust system, which we're going to talk about that in a bit, but uh, yeah, let's give it a go. So moving on to number three of the things that I absolutely like about the Triumph Scrambler 1200, it's going to be the overall fit and finish quality of the bike. I think Triumph did an amazing job in the finish department of this bike. Everything feels so well thought out, so uh, looked at. It's not like they didn't cut corners anywhere. Uh, from the logo here, the anodized aluminum uh, handlebar clamps, the brushed aluminum tank strap, the Monza gas cap, uh, all the way from the heat shield in anodized kind of brushed aluminum. I love the fact that there's brushed aluminum everywhere. Uh, I mean, I like the look of the Bond Scrambler, the Bond Edition. 
but I think that this one looks really good because it has the anodized aluminum swing arm, heat shields. It just contrasts with the rest of the bike. Uh, I'm not too fan of like blacking everything out. I thought about it. I played around with some renderings, but I think the aluminum does a really great contrast and balances the overall look of the bike really well. So yeah, you can see everything on this bike I think is really high quality, really high spec. They didn't cut corners anywhere, like I said before. Uh, before I ever looked at this bike, I was all over the Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled, the 800. And once I put the two bikes together, so I went to this dealership where they sell both Ducati and Triumph, and I was able to get on the Scrambler uh, from Ducati, the Desert Sled, uh, get a feel for it, and then I really liked it. And then I went over to the Triumph department, I saw the 1200 XC, and once I got a feel for the bike, and I went back to the Ducati, it felt like a toy. It, it, it definitely, sorry Ducati and people that have Ducati out there, I'm a fan of Ducati over here, but definitely between the Scramblers, the Desert Sled has nothing on this bike. I think they did an amazing job with the details everywhere, you know, stainless steel, heat shield in the front, this brushed aluminum, uh, fake airbox cover, uh, the heat shield back here, the sprocket cover, the heel guard, the aluminum swing arm, even the aluminum skid plate, aluminum front fender. I think they did a really, really good job to balance out the overall look of the bike. Uh, and I'm definitely a fan. So moving on to number four on the top five things I love about the Triumph Scrambler. It's gonna be the riding position. So this bike is just about 30, 3.1 inches at the seat uh, the handlebar and the handlebar risers are reversible in which they give you I think it's about a half an inch more of overall clearance on the handlebar which translates to a lot more leverage on how you control the bike so the commanding position that you feel once you're on top of that bike especially when you're on the city around traffic around cars it just gives you a lot of confidence, uh, both from a safety standpoint, but also from a riding standpoint. Yes, it's a little bit on the tall side, but I've never felt, you know, afraid of taking curves or leaning into curves or taking highway exits at speed because the center of gravity is that much higher. I haven't had that issue. It actually gives me a lot of confidence when going off road with the bike because you have all that ground clearance on the bottom. Uh, I think the overall riding position is really really comfortable the seat is also very comfortable compared to the one that i had on my ducati hyper motard which was essentially a piece of two by four pressure treated lumber uh, i've done about like a three and a half hour each way uh road trip with my girlfriend on the back and a lot of luggage on the back and honestly it was super comfortable the riding position on this bike is just it's just great i think it's just right uh I know that guys that are on the taller side, uh, they complain a lot about not being able to reach the floor, but with this one, the XC, that problem shouldn't be as bad because you're not standing as high as you are with the XE, which I think it's about 34.5 inches an inch higher at the seat, which makes a lot of difference, especially with the width of the engine underneath you. So point number five. And it's the last one of the top five of things that I love of the Scrambler 1200. It's going to be the agility of the bike. This bike, for how heavy it is, I believe it's around 456 pounds dry, just under 500 pounds with fuel in the tank. Uh, for how heavy a bike it is and how tall it is, once you get up to speed, once you get comfortable with the bike and you are familiarized with the feedback that you're going to get from the bike and what to expect, it feels pretty much like a sports bike. You can ride it as passive and comfortably as you want, or you can ride it as aggressively as you want. And frankly, I haven't had a situation where I'm like, shit, I've reached the bike's limits, and like, she's not comfortable there. No, like it, it, it hasn't been the case. And I've driven this bike pretty aggressively uh, in a sports bike type of riding. Uh, I've also ridden it as a cruiser bike and it's just super comfortable super agile this bike for city riding i'm here in the downtown of sunny miami florida for city riding and people here drive crazy you're just able to go through potholes and avoid 
cars and people that are doing stupid things in the road uh, it's just an amazing bike for that uh, it is heavy I, I, I won't I won't hide that fact the bike is super super heavy but like I said once you get used to it you'll definitely have a fun time and you come to understand that it's actually very agile the little trick I did which is actually it's on the Triumph manual of rotating the risers 180 degrees so right now I have the handlebar on the race position helped out a lot like you really can't understand the extra amount of leverage that you get on that front end of the bike just by raising the handlebar a little bit more and that's even better on the xe which has even a wider handlebar so more momentum that you get on that front end and how could i not mention the absolute work of art that is that high level exhaust i think that is the signature trademark on the triumph scrambler uh i know it's a nightmare to have this thing so hot so close to your leg i've gotten used to it i did the decat on the bike which helped a lot with lessening the heat that you feel on the leg but i wouldn't have a other way uh, I, I wouldn't have this bike with a low slung exhaust or with anything other than what it looks like right now which is fairly close to how it comes from factory uh it's just that i had the sarge slip-ons i think triumph did an absolute work of art for the routing that they chose for the headers and the mufflers on this bike. I think that's the trademark signature on this bike and that's how you can easily distinguish it between, between a regular Bonneville or a Street Twin is that high level exhaust. I wouldn't have it any other way around. I know there's people that go for the low mount Sard, but honestly, I'm, I'm not a fan of that look. I really like it like that. Okay guys, so we've reached the end of the top five things I love about the Triumph scrambler 1200 and like everything else in life not all can be good news so let's jump into the top five things i dislike about the scrambler so starting off i'm going to talk about the stock exhaust sound on the bike and now i understand that there's euro regulations that you know prohibit the level of sound and in order to control emissions they have to add more baffles in and more uh, contraptions into the overall exhaust build uh, to keep it quieter and to keep the CO2 emissions uh, down and be able to pass inspections. But man, it is so, so quiet. Like the bike just sounds pathetic. When I was running the stock exhaust and I'll put a link to a video that I did with the stock exhaust because obviously I don't have it anymore. Uh, it's, people didn't, didn't hear me. Like I passed next to cars and the cars didn't even know I was there even at like at idle I would rev the bike in neutral and it literally the sound it sounded like a mystery coffee coffee maker when it's just about running out of water that was honestly embarrassing to say the least uh, so that being said it's an easy fix uh, obviously now this is the opposite end of the spectrum this thing is giving me brain damage and hearing loss for how loud it is but yeah that's gonna be my number one uh, dislike on the bike moving on to number two and i'm looking at you or what used to be here is the catalytic converter on this bike sits right where your calf is and i'll show you later but i literally have this same six grills tattooed on my calf uh just from the intense amount of heat that it produces and that gets stored in that steel box now obviously I'm running the SAR DCAT, so it's a uh, titanium pipes running straight through. That helped a lot. It still gets hot, but not as close at, as it used to when the bike was stuck. That was just infernal. It was so freaking hot that it made me not want to ride the bike as much uh, as I do after getting the DCAT, especially now getting close to the summer. I live in South Florida, so temperatures here can easily reach 105 degrees. So having a microwave next to your leg not ideal so moving on to number three and i don't know if this is an issue that happens to all triumph scrambler 1200s but i did do some researching on a couple of forums and i saw a couple of people that were having the same issue so apparently this bike from factory runs quite lean so there's not a lot of fuel to that mixture again i don't know if that's tied back to that euro emissions controls uh but the bike would stall on me all the time 
uh, stop lights, stop signs. When it got into operating temperature, I would stop at a light and I was in first gear clutching. I would give it a ref to take off from the light and the engine just literally died. Uh, I took it to the Triumph dealership over here in Pompano, worst service ever. Uh, and they couldn't figure it out. So I saw this video from Tech Bike Parts and they recommended the booster plug, which is supposed to rich in the fuel mixture and help out with the stalling issue, especially if you're doing things that are gonna make the bike even leaner, such as the decat, air filter, uh, the exhaust, you're doing, you're adding more air to the mixture. So the booster plug basically helps rich in the mixture by tricking the computer into thinking that it's running cooler. Uh, and it solved it. Honestly, I haven't had any issues with stalling uh, since I got that installed about eight months ago. So again, you shouldn't be paying 14, I think it's close to 15,000 now for the 2021 model year, paying close to $15,000 for a bike that will stall. Again, I don't know if this is something that is a recurring issue, but I know I had the bike stall on me probably a hundred times. And yeah, that was super frustrating. So point number four on things that I don't necessarily like about the Scrambler, and you won't see them here because I already swapped them out, but it's going to be the stock tires that come with the bike. So this bike from factory, both this one and the XE, come with the Metzler Tourance tires. So some people rate them as 80-20 tires, some people rate them as 90-10 tires, and I've seen 85-15. I would personally consider those tires as road or street tires that have a scrambler look. But by no means are those tires off-road or, you know, meant to go into trails and let alone mud. mud. I've seen people that do it, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it with my skill set. Uh, I just think if you're going to do a bike that is labeled scrambler and is meant to go and rip around trails and mud and the countryside, at a minimum, Triumph should do the Pirelli Scorpion rallies or the Rally STRs as standard equipment on the bike uh, and not such a street bias tire as the Metzler Tourance. Now, that being said, the Metzler Tourance is an amazing street tire. I love those tires. I ran them for about 4,000 miles and they still had a little bit of meat on them. I just wanted to throw in this Bridgestone Batlax AX41s. Uh, which have been amazing, but I'll do a video on that later on and talk up more about these tires. I only have about 350 miles on them so far, so I will I will do a video on them. I definitely recommend these tires, especially if you're able to get them at the price that I got them from. Uh, but yeah, tires on the bike, man. Try and step up your game and do standard Pirelli Scorpion rallies, Continental TK70 rocks. Uh, these tires I would consider too aggressive for a standard uh, run-of-the-mill bike, but Pirelli Scorpion Rallies, Continental TKC70 Rocks, Dunlop uh, makes a lot of tire options that will suit this bike better than the Metzler Tourances. And number five on the things that I don't like about the Scrambler, honestly, I ran out of ideas. I thought about it, I've, I've been, you know, thinking about this video for the last like week or so, and honestly, I haven't thought of anything else that I don't like about this bike. I'm being super honest. I think Triumph did a really good job on this bike. They, Triumph did a really good job in the design of the bike, selection of the engine, selection of the components, uh, putting this whole package together and not making it an astronomical uh, sticker price. I think they, they really did a good job. So yeah, I'm sorry, but that's it. Four things I don't like about the bike. Now I'm gonna add one more thing as a bonus that I like about this bike, actually a lot about this bike, is that it's super easy to work on. Uh, I am by no means a car mechanic, motorcycle mechanic at all. I am relatively uh, handy with tools. Uh, I work in construction and I've always done all the maintenance to my own cars. So as a first time bike owner, uh, I've been able to do a lot of things with this bike that I normally wouldn't have done, but there's so much resources out there available, such as YouTube, uh, forums, Facebook groups, that you can very easily 
you know decipher how to do things on your own bike and save a lot of money uh, I flushed the whole radiator system myself I done uh, obviously engine oil and oil filter changes I've done all my chain maintenance and adjustments on the chain I changed my own tires uh, the sard decat header as well as the slip on exhaust i installed those myself uh the grab rail on the back obviously the this is bullshit but you know the headlight grill uh i think it's just overall an easy bike to work with and i think it all has to do with the fact that the bike is big it's tall so it gives you a lot of ground clearance uh there's not a lot of like very specific you know tools or like sockets or or not drivers that you need to use to get access to the parts that you need to get access on the bike so yeah uh i think it's overall it's a really i would definitely recommend this bike as a beginner bike why not uh i'm a fair proponent of if you know what you want even if you're a new bike owner or you've never owned a bike in your life but this is your dream bike let's say or whatever other bike don't if you have the means to do it don't start with something like small because you're gonna like grow it so fast and then you're gonna be like what the hell do i do with this now i'm ready to move to what i really wanted just if you have the means to do it again get the bike that you want obviously be responsible with it this bike has a lot of power it can get quick pretty fast so know yourself know your limits and as you start getting comfortable with the bike it'll all come naturally but yeah definitely that's my review on the triumph scrambler 1200 xc top five things i like four things i do not like about the bike uh overall needless to say i'm super happy with the bike i would definitely recommend it in a heartbeat uh let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this bike if you have it what mods have you done to it would you get it again do you have buyer's remorse if you're looking at this bike in the market maybe this video will help you uh to make that determination and make that decision and see if you want to go for the bike or not thanks for sticking around thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video please click the like button and subscribe to the channel so 